life before coming into the program it was um, black. It was a dark hole. I couldn't see my way out. It was hopeless. I thought about suicide again. I couldn't get a job because I had a criminal record. I couldn't hold my head up anymore. I was ashamed. I was broken. I feel alone. I feel like there was nobody there for me. I was in so much pain and hurt without nobody. I was harmless. Sometimes I would eat out of the trash can because I don't have enough money to even buy food. Draw took everything. It's hurt. It's hurt. Life before was chaotic. It was just crazy. I've been on heroin for like nine years, you know, before I came to the program. And I started when I was 19. I was, you know, barely, barely had anything going. My brothers were here. We were like codependent on each other. If I didn't have money, then they would give me it. And if they didn't, I would give them it. So, you know, it kind of aided into it. I don't see my family. It's 1983, 84. I don't know what they look like. I don't remember what my mother looked like. And I hate that drug so much because she took everything from me. I just want to see my family one day. Before I go home with the Lord. That's all I want. Life got really hard uh, about seven years ago when I got diagnosed, diagnosed with fibromyalgia. And um, I suddenly couldn't be the person that I had been. And um, it was just like a domino effect from there. It was just one thing after another after another until um, I ended up becoming a uh, blackout drunk. And I couldn't see any way to break the cycle. One of the most devastating things that happened in my life was suddenly losing my boys and my purpose in life was to raise my kids my boys to be the best people that they could be and I failed at the end and um, I just hope that in the next couple of years that I can hopefully make up for that the whole year 2006 was when I started to, you know, even say, hey, maybe this ain't what I should do. You know, my brother Matt, he died in uh, July of that year. He actually overdosed and died when his friend was there. His friend let him die. And, uh, and then, you know, Scott goes to jail and then he gets out. And then two months later, you know, in December, he dies. One of the hardest part of my life was when I left my baby at home. He was three months. That's how powerful the drug is. I left in there for three days by himself with nobody, nobody around supervising him or nothing like that. The police found the baby. They took him to the hospital. <laughs> I should say, if I can only see my kid and say I'm sorry. I went to my grandma's one day and I was like, you know, I needed, I needed something to get high on. So I go in a bedroom and I robbed her. You know, but she wouldn't press charges. Like, I was like, Grandma, I get it. If you want to press charges. And she's like, no, just get help. 
I had actually had a plan that if I wasn't let in, I was going to kill myself. And, you know, I just felt like I was stuck. I felt like I had no way out. And I just, you know, I pretty much promised myself that if it changed for me, I wouldn't go back. It was Christmas. I was sitting in an empty house outside, and I see the street was empty. It was, there was no human being on that street. Nobody. Everybody. It was home with their family. I went to the store and buy me a present. I cried out to the Lord and asked, did you really are real? Would you help me? I talked to my shepherd. She was my case manager. And I asked her, if it was possible, can she look in the computer and find a program that can help me? And that's how she found how the girl should change. It was awesome that I had a place to go where I could be cared for and loved and reminded of who I was, that I was the daughter of the king and not some worthless piece of trash and uh, that I was unique and that I had worthwhile qualities and that I could make a difference still in this world. I've been in the program 16 months and uh, it's, it's been a slow process but it was, it's been an awesome journey as well. I actually have like over twice as long clean now as I've ever had. And this is, you know, rehab number seven. <laughs> That's how stubborn I am. <laughs> I love this program. I love everything this program has done for me. How it changed my life. I made me believe. Have faith. Courage. Having the courage to change really didn't just focus on one aspect of the addiction. They focused on all seven areas of change and I finally saw the light. This is going to work. This is the right way to go. It's the physical, it's the emotional, it's the relational, it's the addiction, it's the educational and vocational. I learned how to deal with my problems, with my anger. I learned how to put my pride down and be humble. And having the courage to change really helped me see which parts weren't going right. And, you know, basically to depend on the Lord that He'll be there even if people leave me. You know, even if, you know, like my brother's dying, you know, the Lord's still there. And, you know, depend on the Lord and not people. God cares about you and loves you and will take care of your needs. Well, if you don't experience that, you can say it and you can know it and never understand it. You have to have willingness to change. If you don't got willingness, you never will change. You have to have willingness and be keeping real with yourself. It's your life. And I played with my life so much. I would can be dead right now. But by God's grace and mercy, He saved me. He saved me. He put it in he put me in a place that, that was gonna help me. I had a place to just take a deep breath and try to figure out how to fix me and it took time and having the courage to change gave me that time. Graduation is a beautiful thing to me because for first time in my life I've been graduated from something that we're hard for. I never have a graduation. <laughs>
Afterwards, I'm going to continue pursuing my degree to work with special needs children, which, you know, I learned was one of my gifts, basically. That would be the best thing for me. And um, just basically, you know, depending on God and that, you know, and knowing that i got to have sober support, I've already started using it because, you know, I've had, I have this ex-boyfriend keeps trying to talk to me, and he, but he's still smoking pot in that, so the Lord showed me I don't have to have them if that's what they're doing, you know, I deserve better than that. One of the things I like to do is go to school. <laughs> I want to go to Bible college. That's one of my dreams. I want to go to Bible college. Well, after graduation, obviously, um, you can make a difference in people's lives just in the people that you meet day to day. And looking for opportunities to share, you know, what you've been through. But in some of the bigger areas, because I'm sure that's what everybody's waiting to hear. Oh, what are you going to do? what is going to be the big thing that you're going to do? Well, that would that'd basically be going back to school and getting a degree. If you see the name of the program, and he said, how did the courage you change? Do you willingness to have that courage to change and be brave? I'm really brave. This is who I am. Yeah, I told mom I would say, and since she didn't believe me, I say it. But yeah, I got a really awesome mom. Love you, mom. <laughs>